My name is Joseph Lee and my partner is Wes Brown. The topic we chose today is carbon monoxide's effects on oxygen transport. We'll give a demonstration on carbon monoxide's effects at the molecular, cellular, and tissue levels. But before that, Wes will give a brief introduction and explain why we chose this topic. So as Joseph said, we decided to choose carbon monoxide poisoning because uh, of its effects on oxygen transport. And uh, as most of you know, carbon monoxide is actually a very simple molecule. It's a colorless and odorless gas that actually results from the incomplete combustion of different types of organic matter. Now, it can be found in a number of areas. Specifically, it can come from fumes or combustion fumes in cars, stoves, and even boats. And the latter is relevant because, for me, I actually had an uncle who, in 2001, was a fisherman in Alaska, and he, was, he drove a boat all by himself every day, basically. And during the summer one day, for whatever reason, his engine for his boat ended up giving off these carbon monoxide fumes, and he passed out. And when he ended up passing out, the boat ended up crashing, and he ended up being killed. So it just goes to show how dangerous something as simple as carbon monoxide can be. And uh, it's always been an interest of mine to try and figure out how its mechanism works and how it relates to oxygen transport and hemoglobin. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and give a brief demonstration as to how it works, and uh, then we'll wrap it up with a conclusion. Hemoglobin is the oxygen binding protein in red blood cells. It's a tetramer made of two alpha and two beta heme groups. Each heme group has an iron atom which gives hemoglobin its red color and binds to a porphyrin ring and oxygen. When one heme group binds to oxygen, the other three heme groups have increased affinity for oxygen. This is known as allosteric cooperative binding and is responsible for hemoglobin's sigmoidal binding curve. Carbon monoxide, on the other hand, binds tightly to hemoglobin, and the three oxygens bind tightly afterwards. Contrary to what some people believe, the danger of carbon monoxide is not that it will not let oxygen bind. The real danger is that it will not release oxygen due to hemoglobin's allosteric effect. This results in a shift of hemoglobin's binding curve to the left. At the cellular level, hemoglobin normally binds oxygen at the lungs and releases oxygen at the tissues. When carbon monoxide is bound, however, not enough oxygen is released to the tissues. When this happens, this results in anemic hypoxia. The symptoms of this include headache, nausea, confusion, unconsciousness, and death. And this concludes our presentation.